Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This guy over here is Tim, and this is The Second Legacy, and thank you so much for stopping by. Now, this is another episode of Live Caller. So if you want to be on the show, if you want to puzzle a question around the Second Amendment to me and Tim, or just make a statement around something you think we need to pay more attention to for the Second Amendment, there's a Google form right down there in the description. We would love to have you on here, see if the schedule's aligned, and see if we can have a great conversation. And that is what we're going to do today. Now, if you like this content, if you like the channel, please consider helping it grow with us and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you turn the notification bell on so we can help spread freedom and the Second Amendment across the globe. And I thank you so much in advance for your consideration. And today's content is brought to you by AccuFire. They are a friend of the channel. They have sponsored a lot of videos this month on the Second Legacy, and they offer some products that are going to help things be a little more clear when you're looking downrange your next day at your training or whatever day that you go to support and exercise your freedom. Thank you so much to AccuFire. And now let's get into this. We have Ken. Ken, what's your question? Thank you so much for calling in. Let's get it. Well, it's in order with how what your earlier production on your regular channel was about the shooting in Nashville. And, and I was originally going to say, I tend to believe, and this is my own thing, yesterday's conspiracy theory seems to be coming true every day. And, and I still think that COVID-19, whether it was a, a snafu or, 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 uh, potentially done uh, they're using it as a tool to control us and i know with this health emergency uh executive order they want to push that they want to use that as an excuse to confiscate guns register guns whatever they please and, and i think this, uh, let me turn that alarm up this uh mass shooting yesterday i don't want to jump to conclusions smells a political agenda that just doesn't add up in my head i'll let you comment on that yeah, no, I got you. So, so essentially what you're really talking about is the utilization of the political class for political gain around tragedy. That's really what you're referencing. That, that, that's basically in a nutshell. Yep. So, so just, uh, Tim, just to kind of preface, if you didn't see the content on my channel, what we're talking about is specifically executive actions in the, at the White House around well, we don't necessarily believe in hardening schools. We don't necessarily believe in protecting those with firearms because obviously they've made firearms the problem. And then at the exact same time, you have the police commissioner, or not commissioner, the police chief in Nashville, what they're what he's referencing, saying, yeah, the, the suspect in this case, let's just say a suspect to be kind. The suspect here uh, saw resistance and decided to look the other way because there was too many armed security personnel. And that's kind of the point. It kind of dives into calling crime, violent crime, and epidemic of gun violence, which leads you to the health care, which leads you to the mm -hmm. CDC, that kind of direction. So that's kind of what we were talking about. Yeah, I don't see that as much of a conspiracy. That's actually what they're doing. Um, they are mixing politics with health issues, and they're trying to mm -hmm. say that you know we need more gun control because guns are a public health hazard. Well, that's not true. If you take a look at the statistics, firearms and specifically the AR-15 that they just love to target with, with their political agenda, they're generally used, rifles as a whole, less than 500 times a year, they're misused in crime. And AR-15s, maybe 100 times a year, right? So Even less, yeah. It's, it's, it's far from an epidemic. It's far from a pandemic. It's far from a public health crisis. It, it's, it's just them trying to make everybody believe that they're in imminent danger of being killed by a gun that's committing gun violence because guns are, you know, apparently capable of free will. They're not. But they, they <laughs> paint everything as bleak pictures they possibly can. They try to get as many, at, you know, pieces of government involved in their actions. So it's not just health. They're going to try to, you'll see them trying to slip in gun control and, and, you know, environmental discussions, everything they can think of. They're trying to insert the firearm. And as you said, Braden, they're trying to, they, they've painted the gun as the problem. So now they've, they've painted themselves into the corner and they have to address everything as though the gun is the problem. And so anytime they want to do something, they're just going to fall back on blaming the gun. And it, it's, it's, it's predictable. It's like I said, it's not a conspiracy. It's been something they've been doing for quite some time, but the courts tend to see through that and legislators mm -hmm. can work around that. So what they're doing is basically... Uh, a public misinformation campaign. They're trying to sway the public to their way of thinking because, again, this is them being unsuccessful 
at the federal level, trying to pass things legislatively. This is them failing even at the state level in most states. And so they're trying to find other ways they can insert their agenda into the conversation and force change. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is absolutely about control. Gun control is about people control. It has nothing to do with public safety. These are the same people that have no problem with alcohol, have no problem with fast cars, motorcycles, whatever. They go out, there's so many other things they could go out there and rail against to save lives, but they choose to focus on firearms. And so it, it's, it's all about a political agenda. And I think they're mentally daft or mentally ill. <laughs> well, and that's <laughs> Not to the, be too frank. The, I mean, like, yeah, hey, hold, don't hold back, Tim. I mean, seriously. Um, you know, I think, I think there's something there around one of the pieces you just said, the marketing and the misinformation campaign. Because if you look at all the different approaches that the gun control lobbies have taken over the past decades, it's always been on a term and they've been in homogeny in the hit and being allegiant to that term until all of a sudden it switches. A really great example is common sense gun control, common sense gun reform. Those exact same words are repeated verbatim by like a hive mind from anyone that you're talking to on the left side of the aisle, anyone you're talking to on a gun control approach. It's always the same verbiage. It's always the same tone. It's it's almost like you're listening to a recording because they send these things out. These are talking points. This is a centralized information sharing campaign, which is how they're able to mobilize so quickly. Another example that Tim really likes to hit is assault weapons. Well, they stopped using the term assault weapons because it didn't make sense. So they transitioned to weapons of war. So they, they or military style rifle, like they do, they do these, they do these talking points. And then another one came out around the same time where everyone was concerned around health. It was the epidemic of gun violence. Well, why would you do that? The reason was simple. The executive branch has more authority through the bureaucratic mm -hmm. approach of the CDC so they can actually go around all the different amendments that prevent the research coming from the CDC from an executive level. Well, look how that worked out. They do the same thing with the ATF. It's all about redefining terms and redefining all these little word games. But at the end of the day, the catalyst is not really necessary the, necessarily the focus of the conspiracy theory. The focus of the conspiracy, and again, not theory, the focus of the conspiracy is how they use issues and elements of tragedy for their own gain and political purposes. Because as Tim said, and I think this was a great way to say it, they painted themselves into a corner. If you knew the fastest way to speed was to put a governor on the car, but you spend all the time talking about how bad governors are, you can't really continue that line of thinking if the solution is simple. So it's, it's one of those things where they have to commit, they have to double down. And even on my video this morning, where we're literally seeing the Biden administration through Kareen Jean-Pierre talking about how the fact that they don't believe in hardening schools, and then this criminal is literally saying, yeah, that one was hard, so I didn't like it. They're like electricity. They're going to choose the path of least resistance, and we need to be the resistors. Well, outstanding question, Ken. Thank you so much for calling in today. It means Thank the world to us. Yeah, I thanks, man. Appreciate what you both do. Well, if you guys if you guys would like to be part of the call in show, you can be on the show as well. There is a Google form in the description below. Fill out that form. We'll give you a call. We'll get you scheduled and we'll get you on the show. We look forward to having you here. Thank you for watching and we'll talk to you guys soon.